So today I'm going to be going over how I did this shot in uh, Blender and After Effects. This is for a short film called Sleeping with Clouds, and it's in the early stages of filming right now, but the opening of the film needed to have this like raining sequence, and the house had to be a very specific house, and we didn't have the money to like actually film this shot, and also I wanted it to be very stylized and make it look really nice and stuff, so basically I opted just to do this whole shot CGI because it gives you a lot of control and also the house can be very specific. So first thing I had to do is actually model the house. I'm not a 3D modeler by trade or by any stretch of the imagination. So I had to model a house. Correction, I actually had to model uh, a couple houses. Uh, so the first house I modeled was this one and it I didn't like how it looked. Basically I was taking the Ian Hubert way of modeling a house by taking an image that you find uh, from like textures.com or something and then kind of doing a bunch of cutting and extruding to make it look like a house, which looks really good for background stuff, but if this is just the main focus, then it's not 100% the technique I want to go for. And also, this isn't the house style I even wanted. Then I had to do it again, but I did it a little bit different. So this time I modeled this house, which uh, turned out to look a little better. I like the symmetry of it for the film, but again, it didn't look 100% realistic. So then I was like, okay, I should probably watch an actual tutorial. I watched Blender Guru's How to Make an Abandoned House tutorial, and that was extremely helpful. I mean, I, the, the house is not an abandoned house, but it, it has a lot of tips and tricks on how to make a nice house. So that landed us on the final house design, which I really liked. I used a lot of reference. I actually found a house on my drive to one of the shoots and I found this house that looked pretty similar to this one and then I basically just used it as reference and pretty much stole from real life. It's actually kind of nice that I modeled these two houses because I actually just used these models in the background of this shot so I have two models that I use. I actually just duplicated the one to the right all the way in the back and you can't tell, Nobody, nobody's gonna look that hard. What I first did was sort of just blocked out this very simple scene and added the camera move, which is just a tilt down. At first, I knew kind of how I wanted it to look. Even in the animatic, I actually blocked that out. So I knew I wanted this kind of look. I did a little bit more of a quarter turn in this, but in this example, it's the quarter turn is there, but it's more focused on the house. And that just came with me just playing around with the camera. Now as for lighting, the moon is actually just a simple sun that's colored more tealish and it has a large angle, meaning it's a lot softer. And that just kind of goes across the whole world. And then what I basically decided to do was add in a bunch of cards. So I added a bunch of black cards that are not visible to the camera, that but are basically blocking off certain lighting to certain places because Without it, certain things get highlighted more so than I wanted it to because I wanted the focal point to be here, the window, so the eye drifts right to there. But here, brightest places are like here and here and a little bit over there. So I just added these planes that have no ray visibility in the camera and then that basically darkened up a few things and made the focal point more obvious that it is the uh, window. I added some spotlights to make it look like street lamps. It's sort of just implied that there's street lamps on the street even though you don't actually see any of them. I was going to add them in the sky but it made the opening part look a little weird so I, I didn't do that. The curtain, the reason why the curtain looks so good is because the curtain is just a plane that has bumps in it that looks like a curtain. And then I just made the material a mix between a principled BSDF and a translucent. So I'm mixing in a translucent with like a white shears texture and then blending in the two so it's kind of see-through. And then behind that, there's an area lamp behind it that makes it look like there's light coming in from inside the room and it's very warm and bright. So that makes those windows look a little bit more 3D because they are 3D. As for the sky background, the sky background is actually just a uh, stock video from Storyblocks and it's really big in the sky 
And essentially I turned it off. I set it as indirect only in its own little collection. All I really wanted was that lightning interaction so it like brightens up the uh, 3D model timed out perfectly. I turned it off in the actual render. It was just easier to composite it later and into After Effects. As for the house, I needed more detail, like especially around the edges and stuff. So I added a bunch of assets like from Ian Hubert where he had like 3D scan plants and I think you get those when you subscribe to his Patreon. So subscribe to his Patreon if you'd like some free assets. I guess it's not that free, but I even added his little cans and I went on to Sketchfab and I went and I downloaded a few electrical boxes just to, just to place randomly, just placements and stuff. I got like an electrical wire here, put it in the background just to add that detail going in here, add in more plants and stuff like that, and you know, some roses and stuff, some pots. Just makes things look more realistic. Some trash bags and cans. Without it, it just wouldn't look as realistic. I made all the materials wetter. I modeled all these uh, houses without the intention of making them look wet, which I guess was stupid. But if we go in here, what I basically just did was clamped whatever roughness it had with a color ramp into the roughness, and it just made it more wet, basically. And, you know, it implies uh, rain has been on it. I added more details like like grass and stuff like that. I used Blender Guru's grass essentials and you can see it, the, the grass is pretty dispersed on here because it, you, you don't need all the the grass because of the angles. So you're only really needing like a certain amount of grass. So it was just easier to render out a smaller amount of grass. Yeah, I could have done this myself with like geometry nodes and stuff, but honestly, I had Blender Guru's grass essentials. So I will just use that. <laughs> It, it looks good. I rendered out the shot. I was gonna render with my GPU, but every time I rendered it, it was like, it, it failed. So I rendered with my CPU, which is much slower. I, I even had depth of field on there. And, and when you add depth of field, that needs a lot of samples. And what was really nice about this is that when you render at a low sample count, and when you have denoiser on, everything sort of waves and stuff like this, which kind of looks like, <laughs> luckily enough for us, rain so it actually worked really well that i had the low sample count so it's warbling but it actually looks like rain is being hit with it so it worked out in our benefit so then the next step was obviously adding all of the rain so i decided to do it in compositing instead of inside a blender because i didn't want to do that. I know CG Geek has a really good rain tutorial, but I was like, how many objects I have to do that to and all that stuff. I'm like, I'm not doing that extra work. So I decided just to do it in post. And luckily, Action VFX, who I've used a lot before, has this fantastic rain collection. So I went in and I downloaded a bunch of rain assets and raindrops on the ground and, and dripping waters and all that stuff. So basically I then just used that and I brought it in here. Now this does have a camera move, so that makes things more complicated, but not really because there is a wonderful Adobe After Effects exporter where basically it takes your camera data and then comes over here. Let me look it up for a second. I, actually, I, I, I guess it looks like it comes in with Blender. So you just have to enable it, I guess, on the import export. Okay, cool. So then you can bring in a camera and then you can just hand place all of your stuff in 3D space, all your water drips and such. The key is just a lot of layers, basically. Like here is all of the layers of, and it's also colored and tinted all these splash layers and rain layers, you just need to add a crap ton to make this look fit into your scene. And that's essentially all you have to do is just a bunch of stuff and then you just layer, layer, layer until it looks right. And this looks right to me. It could look wrong to you, but it looks right to me. I even went in here and I made things darker from the render, like the, the windows I made darker, the road I made darker. I added myself some chromatic aberration. And this is, I believe, a free plugin called Quick Chromatic Aberration. And essentially, if you don't know, 
it's what lens dispersion does in Blender. It goes in here and makes it look like it was filmed by a camera where, you know, lenses suck. I've never seen a perfect lens. Well, I've never worked with one. I'm not rich. Then I added some grain, some fast grain is what I like to call it. Basically what fast grain is, is you get an adjustment layer and you add a fill with a 50% gray thing on it. Then you add the noise effect, then you blur that a bit and then you put that on overlay. So here's what it looks like without that. The reason why this is, I call this fast noise is because it's faster than adding the other noise effects on there because the noise effect is really nice, but it's too sharp. So you just need to basically do this kind of work around to make this look like a less sharp grain and it makes it look really nice. Then I color corrected it with some Lumetri, basically just adding curves and making the colors look nice and going into the curves adjustment and changing the hues of things. So it, it doesn't look as fake. It looks real nice and slick. Then I added an optics compensation to make it look again like it was filmed on an actual lens. And then at the end, I believe I just did a blurred edge kind of effect. And then I also added some vignettes uh, with a black solid with a mask. So that, that looks really good. Now, when I watched it, I was like, you know what? This doesn't look 100%. Like, it doesn't look realistic. And I was like, well, if you did a tilt up from the sky, basically, you're, you have the, the camera tilted up and it's raining really hard, you would probably get some schmutz on the lens. You'd probably get rain on the lens. And I remembered there was this tutorial that I watched when I was learning After Effects years ago, maybe like 10 years ago. And it was called Water Drops by Video Copilot. And this came out, when did this come out? Uh, this came out in 2008. So the After Effects they're using is ancient. And the effect doesn't even look that good the way he did it. But using this effect was pretty good. What I did was added this really old effect called CC Mercury. And I mean, basically what it does is it just makes it the, the image look like there's, it's like water. But what you need to do is you have to pre-compose your layer and then, then add that effect on top. So it looks like this essentially, and it looks really bad, like in motion. It looks really bad in motion, but when you add a camera lens blur and maybe some exposure effects, it looks pretty realistic. Like it looks like there's water on the lens and I made the, the camera lens blur, I blurred it out to shit, you know? So it's from that to that. And I even went in here and made the aspect ratio the correct one to anamorphic. So it basically stretched out the, uh, the bokeh in the right way. And it looks super realistic and, and it drops on the lens very realistically. And that's just that little extra touch where it's like, you don't have to add it, but when you do, it makes the shot look that much better. So that's basically how I did this shot. It's not extremely complex, but it did take me a while to get done. So it, it, this may be a week of work combined. Thank you for watching. If you wanna donate to the Sleeping With Clouds movie, go ahead. It's uh, it's free to donate. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'll see you guys on the flipty.